Time to go shopping. I already had some breakfast and now we try to go buy some pants. We have one hour, so hopefully, in one hour, we can find something. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to wear a dress. No choice. So, let's go. <sighs> it's all just sports. But it's raining. I'm back to the room. It's 12 o'clock, so I have two hours to prepare now. I got the pants, I got some drinks, some sugary drinks, so I can like get some sugar during the game when I get tired. Hopefully they let me <laughs> in with the drinks because they're really strict. I don't even know if they're gonna let me in. It's exhausting. <laughs> Life of a chess player. Huh? So I have to leave now. I'm a bit late, but now I have official pants and we go round two. A draw is enough to secure my next round. <laughs> We have it! Second win, two wins! I am in the next round, I am in the next round! Me and my pants are staying here in the World Cup in Sochi, Russia. It's so great! We won! And we have the song, the song that made us win. Ah, oh, beautiful! I feel so happy! I was so stressed. She, she surprised me in the opening. I thought she would play the Benoni, then I would be scared. But then she went to B5. I was even more scared. <laughs> because she definitely prepared some. Actually, she didn't. Her coaches prepared her. And that was visible because she never played any type of similar position to this in her life. And she knew that I feel very uncomfortable in Benoni type of structure. So they prepared her very well, I have to say. But I sacrificed the pawn on move four or three. I don't even know. Four, yeah. I didn't know the theory, I have to check it. Maybe we will check the theory as well. Yes! Yes! Tomorrow's a free day for me. I do not need to prepare anymore, anymore, anymore. Okay, no, that was weird. It's a free day today. I don't have to play the tie breaks. I can relax for one day, but I'm extremely tired. I realize 
I'm not that young anymore and every hour of sleep is important. Actually in like 15 minutes we're going to take the cable car up the mountain. Hopefully get some nice pictures, some nice views, do some sports at the same time. I'm already drinking my third coffee of the day. I also prepared a bit for my opponent already. I am white. I think I'm playing well. I think. The pairings are very unclear here, but I'm supposed to be playing white tomorrow in the first match and then second one I would be black. Yeah, I I'm think I'm gonna prepare some new opening that I haven't played before. Actually, it's not even in my database, I checked. So hopefully I managed to surprise her. Like my opponent surprised me yesterday. I will analyze these games on my computer with you guys so you will see all my thinking process during the game and all my struggles. They were a lot, I promise. Yeah, I can't wait to go back to sleep. I'm already drinking my third coffee of the day. Also, I apologize, my hand is shaking. Like this one and the one that I'm filming with, sorry. If they're shaking so much, like I was at breakfast and I was holding the cup of coffee and I was like this. I was shaking so much. Yeah, I don't know why, I, I, I'm really shaking. I hope I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> back to the chess portion of the vlog. Uh, I will uh, very very quickly and briefly explain what happened in the second game of my first match. Um, so let's start. So I played d4 as usual and she played knight f6 and e6 and after knight f3 I was expecting her to play bishop d4. Um, and this would lead to some interesting lines in the Bogo Indian defense, but she really surprised me here and played c5. And in this moment I was thinking, oh my god, I will have to play against the Benoni. And as you know, Benoni is type of structure where... Um, Benoni is type of structure... <laughs> I'm not in shape of filming today. Benoni is type of structure uh, where white has advantage in the center, black has weaker pawns, but in the long run, if white does nothing, black can just easily crush. And um, so I was not very happy with that because I wanted more balance, balanced position uh, as draw was enough to stay in the World Cup. So I played d5, you know, nothing much to do. And here again, she surprised me and she played b5. And here I went into deep thing, it was 30 minute thing. So um, the problem was that this was a very, very important game for me and I was very stressed because I, I really couldn't lose this one. I really just didn't want to fall into her preparations. So I didn't want to go to the main line, which in this case would be, um, this case would be takes, takes and takes, d5. Um, g3, bishop d6, bishop g2 and the position that would ha be on the board would be something like that. And yes, I would be a pawn up but look at the black center, look at these beautiful bishops, look at this nice open file, you know, it's it, there's compensation for that pawn that black gave. So in this moment I decided to <laughs> Well, I calculated that maybe I can counter gambit her b5. So I decided to play e4, which is a pawn gambit right on the spot. And she just took, I play uh, bishop d3, knight f6, castle. So what was my idea to go e4? It's not just to give a pawn, it's to gain opening advantage in case that... Uh, I get the castle and bishop on d3 while she has the same position, except, okay, I'm a pawn down. But she has the same position and I make two moves, which it could be very crucial and it was in this game, because after takes takes, bishop a6, which is the best move, 
uh, takes takes knight c3 she now has to start making good moves um well also very precise moves and she played knight before here for example which it's a very direct move but at the same time the consequences of it could be pretty bad because okay of course she wants to take this pawn now um and of course i wouldn't let her i played rookie one which was again not the best move because here black has one move that uh basically equalizes the game before i was better as we can see uh computer we can also put it uh, says that c4 is the only move that actually keeps black's position in good shape because of course the idea is to put a knight on d3 which is a very annoying knight she thankfully didn't play it um by the way in this position the best move for me was bishop g5 um i wouldn't expect that honestly because after some h6 i was not sure how well am i holding up uh, because more pieces i exchange i felt like more that my advantage disappears so but rookie one was not a bad move because she played bishop e7 uh, and now as you can see computer says i'm already winning after one move and the move was d6 and i played it forcing the bishop back on f8 and now just pushing a3 uh, that's the problem with putting knight knight here now knight has to move where though um i was expecting the knight to move back to a6 because that protects the c7 square and here i would probably play knight e5 um we would see some g6 and i would be just annoying every piece on the board and my advantage here is just huge but my opponent surprisingly she played knight c6 i was not expecting that move because here i was just thinking you know knight d5 you really cannot stop the move knight c7 there's literally no move that stops knight c7 so she goes rook c8 and here precise move not to go knight c7 directly but first bishop f4 to protect this pawn and this square that it will not be taken by my opponent so after h6 knight c7 takes takes and queen on c8 and this position is basically already won i thought she would already resign but of course she had to fight till the end that was her only option i could have blundered something and I played firstly bishop d6. I didn't want to give her any counterplay with d5, giving her some center. I didn't want any of that. Even though it was not dangerous, I just didn't want to. And after bishop e7, you know, I would just play normal moves. And again, queen d6. I didn't want her to push her pawn anywhere. Plus, I'm protecting the pawn on c7. And uh, now, this was kind of a critical moment. Uh, in my position because here knight a5 was pretty good move uh, the idea of course is to firstly maybe go knight b7 forcing the queen to move and then moving the pawn or taking the pawn and i was thinking okay i really really don't want to give the pawn so i was waiting the decision should i give up an exchange or should i give up the pawn on c7 and i decided I prefer to keep my pawn on c7, it's stronger, it's potentially already a queen, and I really don't care about giving my exchange back. I just take, you know, take all the pawns, and yeah, okay, and the game continued like, like that. Um, she tried, she sacrificed, she tried for some back rank mate, I didn't let her, and you know, I just in case play h3, why not, right, why not? and yeah the game continued and it finished pretty quickly um this was my last streak because she couldn't take due to this double attack and after knight c4 just knight a7 and this will be a queen the next move and my opponent resigned and i won goodbye i'm so anxious i'm so anxious i'm gonna miss everything i'm gonna miss the bus i'm gonna miss the game i'm gonna lose everything